Welcome into the latest edition of the Charleston County Connects podcast, and we are joined by Herb Nims, who is an engineer and the project manager for the Glen McConnell Parkway improvements. And we are not going to bury the lead here. Uh, substantial completion date is coming when? March 25th of 2024. Okay, so that is four, four or five months away. Yes, sir. But for the residents who utilize Glen McConnell, they're going to see some of the improvements already come to fruition prior to that date, correct? Indeed. What do you, what do you think is going to open up? So right now we're wrapping up phase two, which was a lot of median work. Um, westbound lanes, you can probably see those uh, have been done for quite a while. Uh, we do have to put some finishing touches on the westbound side. But once we are done with phase two, we'll move over primarily to the shared use path on the eastbound side. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll finish installing some multimodal improvements, which are bus stops. There are seven new bus stops along the corridor. Um, three of them uh, are actually functioning already. Um, Carta has, has started to use those. But uh, there are a couple remaining on the eastbound side that are, are coming. Um, but eastbound lane main lines should be uh, paved probably within, hopefully by the end of the year. Okay. Um, and so you will see some some widening there on the eastbound side. It will match more closely to what we see on the westbound side. So even before we get to that substantially complete date, there may be an opportunity before then for people to utilize the new lanes on yes, Glen McConnell. Yes, absolutely. I think the, the substantial completion date, what you'll see closer to the end is a lot of the window dressing. So making the site look clean, uh, we do have plantings at the intersections. We have a design build irrigation system that's going in. Um, so it'll be beautifying the project. Okay, so the irrigation system that helps grow uh, whatever additional plant life yeah, and that sort of thing. Yeah, all native plants. Uh, City of Charleston is pretty particular about what plants they use. So we've been coordinating with them and uh, to pick the best plants and hopefully that irrigation system will, will do, do wonders for everything around the intersections. Very cool. This has been um, a project that has been a long time in the making, and uh, we always try to remind citizens that uh, most of the work that happens on these projects happens well before you break ground. Um, what has the construction process been like for you overall? Um, how have you seen it move along, and like, kind of what, uh, what do you have to deal with that maybe the citizens don't realize happens all the time? So uh, regulatory work is probably the one thing that that stops progress, um, you know, at the front end of a project, uh, especially when you are in environmentally sensitive areas. Uh, we are direct, directly adjacent to Church Creek and Long Branch Creek, which uh, ha are prone to flooding. Um, so we had to check those boxes, go through the core, go through the city of Charleston for their stormwater permitting. Um, it's just a process that takes almost years uh, so you know anywhere from nine months to 18 months so it, it's not something that you can just run through uh, you have public input which is also an important part of that process um, a lot of that you know can take up to three years so it's something that goes on behind the scenes and a lot of people you know want the project to happen immediately sure. and yeah. uh, unfortunately it's just one of those things it, it's a it's a box that you have to check. Yeah, and they're important boxes to check. Um, you mentioned the flooding. You, you can't widen from two to or four to six lanes without anticipating what this could mean for drainage right. and runoff in those areas. Right. So that's why those permits are so important. Absolutely, yep. Um, when it comes to actually breaking ground and starting the construction process, um, a lot of the work is done at night, and uh, people ask why. W what's the benefit to the nighttime work? So the DOT has restrictions on uh, some of their, their major throughways, and, and that's for a lot of highways um, or major arterials throughout the area. Glen McConnell is no exception to that. And the, the night work prevents uh, people from getting stuck. In, I, I know people are probably mad that they're stuck in some congestion now because sure. you know, construction is, is ongoing and we should expect some delays. But uh, the night work is, is done so we can get traffic from point A to point B during those AM and PM peak hours mm -hmm. uh, more efficiently than if we were closing a lane during the day. Uh, I probably, probably wouldn't hear the end of that one. So Sure, sure, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> And when you have a project of this magnitude, it is uh, about a lot more than just widening. Um, the the mixed-use 
path. Um, where is that going to be, and what's what's the benefit for our citizens there? So it is connecting from Bees Ferry to Magwood. Okay. It'll be on the eastbound portion of the project, so that's headed from Bees Ferry to Magwood. Um, it'll be a 10 to 12 foot shared use path where people can ride their bikes, uh, walk, run. It, it, it's a connectivity thing that I think is very important and starting to get more importance in Charleston County yeah. um, or in the region as a whole. Uh, I do think we need to improve our bike and pedestrian facilities throughout Charleston County. So this is a good step towards that. And when the weather's nice, just about year round, it's great to have that, that option out there. Does this tie in with the county's kind of complete street look at projects as we move forward? We're always striving to, to better our pedestrian and bike facilities and go for the complete street. Um, it's part of the DOT's process as well. Obviously, Glen McConnell's a DOT maintained road. Um, so yes, absolutely. So moving forward, so the March 25th is the substantial completion date. Um, as there will be some changes to the lights, right? They're, they're gonna replace it with those, I know they call them mast arms, right. but it's the metal, pretty sturdy looking lights. Yes. Um, how many intersections will that go in at and what happens with the timing afterwards? So that goes in at every, every intersection that has a signal currently will get a mast arm and then there will be an additional light um, at Essex Farms Drive. Um, once those are installed, we will install a new signal timing plan. So that will uh, work together in a coordinated effort to, to get traffic through there more efficiently. Um, the contract will be responsible for installing that, uh, but obviously there were plans designed to improve the signal timing throughout the, the corridor. Um, so once they finish and install, hand, hand um, the project back to the city of Charleston who maintains the signals through that area, um, we should see traffic going through there pretty efficiently. A lot of coordination with a lot of different agencies to make a project of this magnitude happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as we get into these final few months, um, any advice, anything you want to remind citizens about? Uh, you know, there is nighttime work, and it's important to people observe the speed limits and keep the contractors safe yeah. when they're on the job site. Yeah, I think it is important for people to be patient um, and travel, you know, with caution throughout the corridor, especially there are a lot of workers that are out, you know, walking around, uh, at, and especially at nighttime, they will have all of their high high vis gear on. Um, but we just suggest people, you know, take it slow. Um, let's just be safe. All right, and let's get to the end of this project. Absolutely. All right, Herb. Thank you for your time. Thank you.